So what is, out of all the films you've seen this weekend, which one is your one particular favorite? Uh, well, I haven't seen them all, but uh, I have to say that I got a couple DVDs from filmmakers that I miss their films, and I like those films a lot. Um, Firemount was great, uh, and the other director's film I met was uh, Childhood Fears, I thought was really good. I thought there, there were elements in both of those that I liked very much. But, uh, you know, I'm not done. Still got another day of films. Got another, tomorrow, so. like, close to half a day, I think, half now. Half a day of films. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen mine on the big screen yet either, so. And it's always exciting. It's like a kid unwrapping his Christmas it gift is. when it this, turns out right. And this really is the world premiere of it because uh, the only one that's seen it completely is myself and the executive producer. Uh, nice. The composer hasn't seen it. The sound editor hasn't seen it all put together. So it is the most world premiere I think I've ever had. So is it going to be like an Ed Wood moment, like in the movie, where he goes down and watches this thing, and everyone's in their shock and starts chugging popcorn at you? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> I have no idea, you know. And you know, you're, we edit on a little tiny monitor, uh -huh. and so to, I used a grain effect to make it look like old film, and you know, all sorts of things. So I'm hoping I'm not watching this thing on the big screen. Like the grains are like you know the size of pizza pie. You're not watching the the whole dancing pixel effect. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. So. You know, it was, it was really shot uh, and edited and stuff for this series, Closet Singer, which is an online thing. And uh, we got fortunate enough to be in a festival. So it wasn't designed to be on a big screen, but here it is on a big screen. So and we'll see. now you get to see what it looks like on a big screen other than on like the little exactly. three by four inch YouTube picture. To me, there's something about watching my face on a big screen that uh, kind of still freaks me out to this day. It's like my <laughs> nostril is the size of my actual body. It's sort of freaky. Yes. So. Well, at least you're not sitting underneath the nostrils or in the, that to those chairs. That is absolutely right. Yeah, I will step yeah. back a little bit because, you know. You want to sit in the high things and rows of book next to God, <laughs> not the ones that you're going, you know, I can see his nose hairs. Exa yeah, exactly. You know. Although when I was a kid, you know, in the movies with the girls with the skirts, it was like, could you? Can you? Can you? You think but it's 3D? Whoa. Exactly. <laughs> come on. Come on. The camera. So, any... Uh, words you'd like to share with future filmmakers before we sign off? Yeah, shoot. Keep shooting. Try new stuff. I mean, I just saw a claymation here. And I'm not a big animation claymation thing, but it inspired me to do something uh -huh. that I would have never thought to do. So I wrote down on my little idea card. Maybe Things to do list? Thought, yeah, like, well, consider maybe a claymation for a closet singer. Or, you know, learn that technique. So uh -huh. it's great, you know. So that's what I would shoot and watch films. Come Lots festivals. of films. Lots of films. Good Lots films or bad films? films. Both. Or both. Man, I learn just as much from good films as I do bad films and vice versa. And, you know, and stuff. Uh, I am not a horror film person, but here I am at a horror film festival. And last night I saw The Exorcist for the very first time. You know, same thing. I can't believe that that's the truth, but... Uh, you know, I learned stuff from that that I should have probably it's learned like 20 there's years ago. There's stuff in there that you're going, wow. This is so simply done. Yes. Well, and, uh, okay, that was stolen in different movies. And, okay, like, in The Exorcist, uh, probably the biggest jump moment in the theater, like when you feel the whole movie theater jump, was when the phone rang. That's what I, I told my friend Mike. Yeah. As for Autumn, the, the two won the Scream contest, uh -huh. she jumped when the, the, the puke came out. Yeah, well, the, that was the second biggest. But the phone rang was the biggest jump and the puke was the second biggest jump and today's filmmakers a lot of them you know they have to slice off heads and hack off and cut people up and burn them and all that stuff but you know we're watching a movie last night that a lot of people have seen many many times and the phone ringing is the biggest jump scare and we're, the thing that makes the, the phone ringing is we've all had that happen Ex yes. we're, we're, in we're just in tune and studying right. and then and the, the filmmaking is so brilliant uh, I'm, you know a billion people have said this before me but it's so brilliant so well done that you're so into the story and then so that that yeah. makes you jump so i mean that's just to learn from that you know where i would never would have had i not been at this festival so it's like when i was watching i go wow anime has pulled off some of these scarier monsters uh, worse like when she's climbing down the stairs uh -huh. yeah i was going i've seen that in anime already it was hell of a lot scarier right even so john carpenter and the thing did a scarier remember he yes. had the bodies he, uh, them popping out like aliens and then they do all the whole little spider climbs i mean uh i think you know like as we progress as filmmakers or it always feels weird to call myself a filmmaker but um you know we can get make effects better better bigger 
whatever. Uh, but he can't tell story any better than a good story is told. So it's like The Exorcist is a really great story. What makes The Exorcist, I think, great is the fact it's so simple of a story yes. that you're sitting there watching it and you go, wow, what's going to happen next? What are the pieces leading to this mystery? Right. And you know, it's, could this really happen? Unlike, like, uh, they, the lady pointed out who played uh, the stunt double for the demons and uh-huh. stuff, she, when she's doing her discussion at the end, points out that in the book, it's the what if. Maybe she's not. She's faking. Right. In the movie, we know it's not faking. And that's well, they what's alluded to it, actually, in the movie. Which Oh, yeah. That, they alluded you know, to it. That, that it the, wasn't really holy water, that it was fake holy water, and yet she was reacting. But at the end is what reinforces that, no, this is a demon, and the two yes. people that know the truth die. Right. Yeah. So it still could be okay. So the detective's still hunting. No, I think it was, you know, of course, it's a great film. It's been around forever. But uh, had I not been here watching other people's films, I would have never seen it. So. I would have never seen if I was uh, filming here. Uh, my, they had to coax me in because I'm not a movie who, buff who likes gross films. Right. I'm not a horror film guy. But I do like watching Sterling-esque storytelling. You know, nothing tops Rod Sterling and his crew that he used for a Twilight Zone even today. Because he used, he never showed you the gore value. He never showed you dismemberment. He just used good storytelling and good, uh, and chose the key parts of like, okay, a horror, this is a horror story. But do we really have to show the beginning or the end? Or do we just show the end and leave the middle end uh, this out? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the. I love the Twilight Zone. I think that's really great storytelling. You know, and it's they, really. And I, you talk about simple. I think that can be really simple. Here's a box. If you press this button, you get whatever. And if you press well, this button, shattered. someone does. You know, it's like the devil box. It's great. I mean, it's so simple, but it's they expand on such a simple concept. Yeah, and they're just dealing with like one simple human uh, flaw. Yes. You know. Like, like the one by Richard Matson that we all remember is the one with the little gremlin on the rain, wing with William Shatner. Right. And all it is is a story about uh, being scared of flying. Yes. And it's done you, so well and taken to such a Like the extras, the same you know. thing. You don't know if William Shatner really did see the demon. Because even when they show you the ripped up uh, wing, they're all sitting there. Did this happen? What did this? Right. They never show you. One person knows the truth, the rest don't. And they think they think he's sort of could he be crazy and could he not yeah, be could he not be crazy yeah same thing it's great anyway that's my advice to filmmakers is shoot film watch film watch films that you don't particularly want to watch like know. the exorcist for like we wanted we exactly, wouldn't have seen it if exactly, we weren't here exactly and it gave a new sense of ideas it did or watch claymation or animation or whatever good well, films and bad films. thank you thank you And have a nice day.